Uh, those are the three relatively new-ish three of the products I've found. Mm. So, out of this, these three, they try, which one would you buy? <laughs> well, God, I, if I didn't see that before and after. <laughs> We're back. We're back. It's episode 20. I lost count. Really. <laughs> so thank you, Victoria. <laughs> this is the Chemist Confessions podcast, a human conversation on all of the skincare science we talk about on the daily. Nailed the intro. <laughs> yeah. And today we are actually going to get into vitamin C derivatives. <gasps> There's a lot. There's a lot. There's, There's more. There's new. Uh. <laughs> Usually these episodes take us a lot longer to get into because the two of us will be doing research. We're like, yo, have you seen this? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. It, if you're ever curious to see what our personal messages look like to each other, a lot of it is just sharing very silly, I don't know, discoveries, <laughs> charts, tables, I don't really know. But yeah. Anyways, uh, but before we get into the meat, we should share a few nice words. Yep. The first one is for the experiment uh, little mini kit. And the title is Excellent Idea and Experiment. The concept of these samples is genius, and there is plenty in the bottles to really know how they work for me. I have no complaints, and I'm happy to report I found a match with more than one product. Woo! Yeah. Um, so if you're wondering what the experiment is, this is our new Gen 4 mini kit. Mm -hmm. um, we, As we launch, we know that ultimately skin is so personal, and really it would just help to give little minis. So we created this experiment kit. For everyone and you can actually select by what ha booster you would mm -hmm. like to trial and that's it that's really what it's about yeah and we are so proud of the little box the yeah. little drawer box we make um, we made with it it's just a really fun kit that i think we inject a lot of personality into yeah. so next all right this is about mr reliable yep and the title is simply the best this person writes this is my favorite moisturizer of all time i have been looking for something more substantial than a gel but doesn't make me look like a mirror oh i feel Man. that i feel <laughs> that in my core i think when we're testing the um sunscreen series <laughs> there's a couple that might oh my god i think i can see victoria in my face <laughs> Anyway, Miss Reliable fits my needs perfectly, and I can't imagine my face without it. Yeah. Woo! Any nice words about her Gen 2, we have to share. Yeah, and for those of you new to the brand or um, wondering what the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 mm. is, we definitely pack a lot more active, uh, barrier-loving actives into mm. Gen 2. It's also more of a little bit goes a long way texture. Yeah. It's still fresh, but it does pack more of a hydration punch. So if you are if you have oily skin, one pump will do the job. Sometimes even that three quarters of a pump will do the job yeah. on a muggier day. I have dry skin. I Even for me, one full pump will do it for most days. If it's a little dry, I go with like ten and a half pumps. Yeah. And for oily skin, this is a win, I can tell you, because Mr. Reliable lasts way longer. So, bueno. Yes. All right. And our final nice word is about Bon Voyage. The title is So Smooth and Hydrated. Short and sweet. She writes, this moisturizer is incredible. I use it all over my face and neck at night and I have woken up with super smooth and hydrated skin. I love that she writes about Voyage like it's a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. We should mention it is an occlusive balm. Mm -hmm. um, it is completely anhydrous. And what that means is it just, it's all waxes and butters. Mm -hmm. So she is actually slugging every night. Yeah, which is, you know, if it works for her, it does yeah. work really well. It's like yeah. going to sleep with a cocoon. <laughs> yep, a um, true cocoon. Yeah, I do that sometimes because my skin is so dry. Kids, uh, proceed with caution if you have more skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you are looking for something to more tackle, like spot treat dry patches. Also, we always say to get creative, um, use it anywhere from like elbows to lips. That would be how you typically want to use it for oily skin types. Yep. All right. So thank you for the nice words. We do not pay for any of our reviews. We're proud of each and every one. And a lot of our customers are so kind to leave their skin type. They're how no they, routine. yeah, they're full routines. Um, and it's just incredibly helpful to everyone just looking to find new skincare. Also, uh, we have a new promo code. Yes. So head on over to our website if you want to check out our products. Uh, please use the code podcast ship and get free shipping on your order. This works for free standard shipping, but it also works for expedited shipping. So if you pack your car and you already qualify for free shipping, still use this code, please. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So because this is a dense one, we are going to head straight into the meat. And in this first realm of meat, we are going to look at vitamin C derivatives, MAP, ascorbyl palmitate, as well as a little bit of SAP, MAP being magnesium ascorbyl mm -hmm. phosphate and SAP being sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Yes. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me, Gloria. All right. All right. <laughs> Don't leave me. I will say bear with us. Yeah. I feel like these episodes can be really difficult mm -hmm. to talk about because you'll realize that even though these are all vitamin Cs, 
they are all different. And this is why I get really... Theme. Yeah. That's the theme. Yeah. And I get kind of annoyed with products that claim just like broad stroke vitamin C benefits and you think you're getting, you know, like the stuff, uh, the three core benefits of ascorbic acid, brightening, antioxidant, and collagen boosting. But you'll find from this episode yeah. that that's not the case with all derivatives. You'll find that there's a lot of molecules just writing the coattails of Dr. Pinnell's research on ascorbic acid. Yeah. But in this first part, I did want to talk about more of this friendly competition that was going on between these different vitamin Cs. Friendly is a strong word here. <laughs> very aggressive dr pinnell but anyways <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should say uh last week i think we briefly mentioned how there was a little bit of this like turf war going on and honestly friendly competition is a good thing because it does require more testing yep so what happened was remember how we said dr pinnell wanted to show that ascorbic acid was Ring the best supreme. right the best the of, iron chef <laughs> exactly <laughs> Uh, between MAP um, and asorbyl palmitate. And mm -hmm. we should mention that asorbyl palmitate was something that Dr. Paracone's lab was looking into. <gasps> the drama! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. So what happened was um, I think they came out with some data about how the absorption of these ingredients just aren't as good as a properly pH-adjusted ascorbic acid serum. But we should say that Dr. Uh, Dr. Paracone's lab was basically like, Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. You should know that even though ascorbyl palmitate, um, one of the kind of, I guess, pushback here was that ascorbyl palmitate does not convert into ascorbic acid very mm -hmm. efficiently. And that was actually used as a metric to say whether or not it was a good antioxidant and would give you all of those benefits. Right. Um, but despite all that, the lab was like, no, 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 no. Hang on. Wait a second. If you use 15% ascorbyl palmitate, it is effective at reducing UVB erythema. It basically was saying, like, just because it doesn't fall into that one, it doesn't pass that specific test, it still has these benefits. So it's kind of a, like, fun little side story. I think that's, like, such a good concept mm -hmm. to talk about in general because a lot of times when it comes to derivatives, that is one of the things they harp on, which is does it convert to the molecule that it's derived from, which has a proven benefit. Yeah. So a lot, they do that study, and if it converts, they're like, hey, you're definitely still getting some of the origin, the OG proven yes. molecule, therefore it works. And that's how sometimes the derivatives skip clinical mm. testing but then another question is how does the derivatives in their non-converted form work with skin because the reality is with uh with anything reaction wise it's never going to go to 100 percent completion so anyway i just think that's like uh this is a really interesting concept here that dr paracone's like you know what i don't give a rat <laughs> <laughs> it actually so you yeah, does it convert to aa i don't care because it still works and i should also mention that like also the because the acid is water-based mm -hmm. and then a lot of these are actually not completely water soluble some of them are more lipophilic some mm -hmm. of them are more they're truly just oil based mm -hmm. um those also can dictate how their mechanism yeah. and how they're absorbed and those factors all matter so this is why that that specific test is kind of like a hmm, like it doesn't really um, factor in everything right exactly um and then to add one more layer which i'm not going to get into but i also want to share with gloria is i went down a rabbit hole looking at sap mm -hmm. For some reason, there's a lot of, they looked at that in comparison to, I believe, like ascorbyl palm. They looked at it in uh, like different types of emulsions mm -hmm. and saw that the absorption was also different. So if danger, you- Danger, danger, yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> exactly. So what we're trying to say is, you know, the ingredient itself, mm -hmm. how, how, like how the, or I guess the type of ingredient it is and its um, specs matter, then what it's in also matters. So hopefully that gives you an idea of why, you know, some of these studies, well, it's like only gives you like one more pixel worth of clarity is how I would see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyways. All right. So moving on. What about MIP? So MIP passively without pH adjustment was actually supposedly the better molecule, even compared to ascorbic acid. That was the theory. But then, of course, this is what spurred Dr. Pinnell to be like, no, 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 no. This is why you need to pH adjust and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then basically showed like, haha, at the right pH, ascorbic acid is better than MAP and ascorbyl palm. So <laughs> the drama, right? Oh like, my god. Haha. So that's kind of this realm of these more like, we want to really think of these as kind of the like antioxidant vitamin C derivatives. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, and this might feel like going back to this whole, uh, I guess, UV erythema and antioxidant capacity. Uh, remember how we were saying about how ascorbyl palm was effective at reducing UVB. 
Well, this is also when Dr. Pennell was like, yeah, but that's UVB. UVA also matters. Oh, and this is God. actually what led to them finding the synergy between vitamin E and ascorbic acid because each of these individually were not good at, I guess, treating UV erythema in, in both UVA and UVB, but together they're better at covering both. So that's kind of this like fun fact for you guys. Like, the whole antioxidant realm kind of crazy, So right? a little friendly <laughs> or maybe not so friendly competition helps yes. us all. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then we found a really great review paper. Bless this person's heart because they really try to tackle the gamut of vitamin C derivatives and how they compare. Mm -hmm. Not even just looking at the percutaneous absorption within skin, um, but also looking at its UV benefits, stability. Um, and even, you know, they look at like things that we don't care about, which is like, tumor inhibition so what they did do was try to give some comparison of how do all these stand when when you across the board mm -hmm. right um so what we should say is first of all ascorbic acid is the only one that requires a lower ph uh -huh. um, where everything else does not need that stringent of a ph requirement yeah so that's one the second thing is we were talking about this whole conversion to ascorbic acid even though, so we saw that ascorbyl palmitate, this doesn't necessarily matter, but a lot of these other um, MAP, actually MAP specifically, was shown to also convert to ascorbic acid, mm -hmm. which is important in trying to understand how MAPs like benefits are for skin. And then finally, the other thing that probably is the most interesting is talking about UV erythema, these like antioxidant benefits. So SAP does actually have human in vivo data showing that it does provide benefits. So yay. So that is something that's so important to highlight mm -hmm. is human in vivo, like on actual human yeah. skin data yeah. is very hard to come by. Yeah. And even outside of vitamin C, that's why we have we have a blog post on the other non-vitamin C antioxidants. And it was so hard for us to talk, to talk about because a lot of them write on in vitro data. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of times you see, okay, great. It's an antioxidant in a testy whoop de doo like, it, a lot of times that doesn't translate to real life scenarios. Yeah, so great. And the only thing was it has been found to be less than ascorbic acid. <gasps> the drama! <laughs> but if you, I think this is where my takeaway is more like not everybody's skin likes ascorbic acid. Yep, for sure. And so if you're wondering, because what Gloria and I sometimes we struggle with is when we ask people, if people ask us, ascorbic acid doesn't work for my skin. Is there something else I can use? Then we want to know, what do you want to use it yes. for? If it's for antioxidant, this becomes very difficult because there's not a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So then I would say this is like great for us, you know, and also for you guys is if you're looking for an alternative, then SAP is a great one to mm -hmm. try. So remember how we were talking about ascorbyl palm. So ascorbyl palm, Dr. Pericone's lab showed this on animal in vivo data, not human data. So I just thought kind of like as what Cora was saying, like why this kind of testing matters. Mm -hmm. There was not on MAP in a sense, like technically um, because what they did was also another animal in vivo study but this was looking at uv induced lipid peroxidation uh -huh. and not looking at uv erythema mm -hmm. so it's kind of like for us we're looking at this like oh it's not a one-on-one -on -one comparison yeah it's really hard and i find it interesting that they did lipid peroxidation animal model mm -hmm. and what they're ox um, peroxidizing on these animals <laughs> may not be what's peroxidizing on your face yeah and that's the struggle with translating animal data to human skin so mm -hmm. yeah that's a great question also we're not even though i said we're not going to cover ascorbyl glucoside in this section they also did find some efficacy but it was less than sap so, so that gives you an idea of like the pecking order <laughs> goes AA, uh -huh. bueno. If AA doesn't work for you, look for SAP serum mm -hmm. for antioxidant benefits. And then there's MAP, which is rough because there's just there hasn't been really any good comparison. So I feel like I, I think I would still gravitate towards MAP. Yeah, I would put that <laughs> loitering somewhere along the SAP corridor. It's <laughs> probably still greater than scorbyl glucoside, but as you can tell, there's a lot of extrapolation that has to yeah. happen with vitamin C derivatives. Exactly. All conjecture. Yeah. So that's really it in terms of comparison. Um, if you're wondering why we didn't really brush on SAP too much, this molecule seems to have come about a little later than when this turf war happened. Right. And funny enough, a lot of it lies in the oily skin acne realm. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the nature of this industry where it's like, it's possible that they might have looked at the turf war and the existing data and was like, well, 
we're just gonna be an alternative let's see what else it can do yeah whatever man <laughs> and that's actually how a lot of these molecules come to light is like trying to find other benefits to claim and territories to claim so mm -hmm. yeah um i also kind of wanted to just share kind of like a funny note um there is talk about like this whole battle of vitamin c derivatives i felt like this is like the way I describe it is if you're an F1 fan, it really feels like the best of the rest kind of scenario. <laughs> um, when it came to like percutaneous absorption studies, a lot of these were like, wait, wait, wait. So for example, a sorbyl tetraisopalmitate, they were like, wait, I have better percutaneous absorption efficacy than MAP. And then 3-O-ethyl sorb is like, wait, 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 but I'm, I'm better than a sorbyl glucoside. Like they all did their comparisons, but the way they do it is like not to take down some of the big ones. It's like they're little like sniping, like sniping, like, like a little, little teeny, tiny, <laughs> teeny tiny BB gun. Like pew. Yeah. I absorb better than that hey, guy. At least I'm better than a scorpion glucoside. Am I right? <laughs> so I found it kind of entertaining in that sense. But that's just how science is. Yeah. So that's it. That's it for me. Part one. Yeah. So this is a quick review of a lot. Honestly, this chart you've probably seen posted a few times from by not just us but other. Um, people who dabble mm -hmm. in this realm as well. It, if you squint at this chart, you're going to get a little cross-eyed and confused. For and sure. Because there isn't a clear winner, right? There's this one has good data in this department, but wait, this one might be better for brightening. But wait, that one doesn't absorb. And it's really hard to say which one is the best. So we're going to get into it a little bit more in meat part two in terms of how to shop these derivatives, what some of our guidelines are. And I want to mention just one little side note here is on the chart, you'll see uh, ingredients like 3 o ethyl ascorbic mm. acid. And in the chart, you'll see a lingo called parentheses trade publication. Mm. And that's what we'll get into in meat part two is on the industry side, people who produce these um, vitamin C derivatives, the people that's actually putting the tails and the hands and the random groups on these derivatives are like, hey, well, since you guys are so interested in a different type of vitamin C, we can we can put our spin on it. And yeah. for those, it's extra hard for us to talk about because the data comes from the yeah. publications, from yeah. the suppliers, mm -hmm. or from an industry group that does like a teeny tiny study. It's not more, it's less academic based. Yeah. And so uh, if you feel like we kind of just threw a bunch of testing and lingo at you, I think how we would sum this up is SAP and MAP we consider to be the OG derivatives mm -hmm. that we typically recommend if ascorbic acid doesn't quite work for your skin type just because of the data behind it. I will say ascorbyl palmitate is that one that I don't really talk about, mm -hmm. um, but there is data behind it and you can consider it to be part of this realm as well. But just keep in mind that this ingredient does also need quite a high percentage. And I think that's something that Gloria and I do not come across a lot in the product realm. So that's probably how I would sum this up. Mm -hmm. And especially considering for AOX, like we're, we're really speaking more in the antioxidant, free radical uh, prevention uh, arena and not in the brightening and all that other skincare claim arena that we'll get into in me part two. All right, and cool. after a lot of dead stuff, it's time to break it up. <laughs> Let's break, 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 break up, break, 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 All right, it's Animal Fun Fact Corner, and today it's my turn. <laughs> um, today we are talking about snails. Um, yeah. This is because I went down the rabbit hole of looking at snail mucin again, and it was been trending on TikTok. My brother bought a bottle, and I'm like, let me just brush up on this stuff. And then I gave up on that and, then <laughs> <laughs> and looked at just snails in general. And then was like, we need an animal fun fat corner, so let's just learn about snails. Anyways, it turns out, you know, you, you guys know it through skincare because it gets tied to a lot of really crazy skincare claims. Anything from acne, anti aging, redness, yeah, yeah, it's just the works, wrinkles, like anything. It's just this magical new elixir that everyone loves. Um, so then I started looking into the sources which led me to types of snails. Mm -hmm, Turns of out course. there's like 40,000 species of snails out there. Then I stumbled upon people's PhD undergrad theses about snail secretion. Ah, doctors of snails. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and learned that, um, first of all, snails are so diverse because they live, they can live anywhere in saltwater, freshwater, land. Mm -hmm. um, and their microbiome is also can be very different per body part area just like ours mm -hmm. um so the snail slime on their feeties <laughs> different than the snail slime on their back that's so cute snail feeties <laughs> slimy feeties, feeties. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh so then i decided all right 
Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just picture someone selling the latest, greatest snail musing serum and it's like, from feces only. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. Bottom of snail, most effective. Yeah. Back of snail, no good. The other brand that I will not name totally gets up on the back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then I started getting into types of snails and then Gloria and I, we started talking about the <laughs> biggest snail ever, which is, um, and one, the biggest snail is the giant African land snail called the Lissa Chatina Furica. Probably butchered that. Furica. But yes. <clears throat> so, turns out this guy has quite a past. About eight inches in length. This is definitely bigger than my palm. Yeah. Like, Yay, big. big. Like, yeah. <laughs> eight inches. Got it. Yeah. The shells have a conical shape. Um, which fun fact, these, the actual uh, shells grow with the snail. Mm. So not like a hermit crab where they have to go find bigger find new homes. shells. Yeah. Um, and they eat anything mm -hmm. like from plant material to fungi to paper and cardboard, they'll eat anything. And you'll realize they'll eat anything with this specific species because <clears throat> they also mentioned that in rare instances, they can consume each other, which is quite gross. Oh. Which is very odd. Oh. Yeah. So Weird. if you see two giant African snails that look like they may be reproducing, Maybe. they might actually be eating each no, other? No, 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 oh, okay. no. Turns out, this snail is actually an incredibly invasive species. Mm. Oh, I have heard that. I like yes. big snail problems. Yes, it has a massive appetite and actually spreads a lot of diseases and for both plant and human. Humans? Yes. Oh. There's actually oh, been never mind. some <laughs> disaster attempts at fixing this big snail problem, literally. And... The first one was actually to just use it as a food resource. So um, do they marinate it, saute it? <laughs> but then turns out that they actually can spread a very serious uh, strain of meningitis. Oh, no. So then they were like, Don't saute it. this is, does not work for us. <laughs> the second one was also very interesting where they, they wanted to introduce it as kind of a food reserve for the American military. And the snails, they broke out of their wait, food captivity. Wait, how? Did they chew through the lock or something? I don't know. Maybe they're just like, let it go. <laughs> I mean, this is still a snail. They're not the fastest no. thing in the earth. No, yeah. So what they decided to do was, let's just introduce a carnivorous species what could of go snail wrong? Um, called the Florida rosy wolf snail. But sadly, what instead just happened was they preyed upon a third type of native they're snail. They're like, oh, these African snails are nasty. We're yeah, not going to eat they're those. they're like, we're not eating that. Yeah. And then basically caused the extinction of this third oh, native no. snail oh, within no. a decade. <gasps> it was not long. So it was like kind of crazy. Anyways, if you're wondering like where these reside, typically found in East Africa, but because of their invasive nature, they've been found everywhere. It's actually been found in China, Taiwan, and India, and the U.S. as well. But the U.S. was through imports and educational purposes, mm. which... Scary enough, I found out that apparently in Florida, they had to go through an eradication effort of these snails Florida. In, in 2011. Uh -huh. And then the last sighting was 2017. So it took them six years to get rid of That is such a Florida snail. story. Yeah. <laughs> it's invasive species that just got extra big in Florida yeah. and extra problematic. Yeah. So no idea. Then I learned that um, something that was kind of interesting is there is a list. It's the top 100 most invasive species in the world. And it turns out the snail is on the list. I checked what this list was. Number one is actually a tree in Australia that apparently grows super rapidly and consumes way too much water. Oh. The second one is the snail. <laughs> oh, that's very serious. <laughs> it's very serious, yeah. And apparently they're also even known to eat stucco and damage buildings. Like that's Oh, how... ew. Yeah, so... Big problem, seriously. When Victoria was doing her snail muse in deep dive, I was joking about the species. Yeah. I was like, well, it's like big enough for a lot of people's faces. So instead of selling snail muse and <laughs> uh, snail muse and uh, serums, we should just sell the snails. <laughs> and then every night it's like, honey, honey, I need to put a mask on and just whoop. <laughs> just put the snail right on your face. Oh, Maybe God. not this species because it might actually eat your face. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so strain of snail matters in skincare, obviously. Um, I think typical snail mucin comes from like garden snails. So, you know. But anyways, um, that's that's the African snail, guys. Oh, no. In today's unfortunate animal sighting. <laughs> so if you see a giant African land snail, maybe don't touch it in the wild. If you see your neighbor take a baseball bat to a giant <laughs> snail... It's okay. Maybe He's probably doing the right thing. Reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, I should mention because if they find that um, they are spreading a specific type of plant disease mm -hmm. or virus, they will have to quarantine. 
And if you remember the badger episode, quarantine is really rough, so especially oh. for agriculture. Oh. So these guys, no joke, man, on the wanted list. Well, yeah. I would never thought. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. So that's yeah. the animal not so fun, fun fat corner. Tough lifting stuff. <laughs> Goodbye, Victoria. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I guess uh, stay tuned for snail muse and content coming soon. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Let's get into meat part two because it's juicy. Meat part two. All right. Let's go to the store and shop for that vitamin C to review. Uh, yeah, I will okay. say to open up this segment, we have to say, I, I think Victoria and I went through a couple existential crisis moments where we talk, think about like, <laughs> all right, we started doing chemist confessions where we did a lot of decode, decode mm. the aisle, how to read reading list. Then we kind of started saying percentage percentages get crazy and then people are reading too much coding got crazy yeah people are starting to get into some ingredients that honestly doesn't really matter and people are reading a little too much into mm. them so we're like how helpful are decodes mm. what should people really be looking for in ingredient list and then we got to vitamin c derivatives and we will say <laughs> this is the product category where we will highly highly recommend you do a quick decode and if nothing else, find out what ascorbic acid or what form of it you're actually getting. Mm. Because all these new launches I find just say very generically on the bottle, vitamin C. Bitsy, bitsy and bright. Bitsy and, <laughs> and bright. Like bitsies, <laughs> but bitsy. But basically, you don't know what kind of ascorbic what you're getting mm. until you read the ingredient list. No. And if you don't know how to find a, <clears throat> the ingredient list, just think ascorbic wood. So if you, there's, it can be a ascorbal something something. It should mm. be a, it can be something something ascorbate, but that is the word you're looking for mm. all right so uh in this episode we're oh, or in this meat part two we're gonna take a closer look at two new more industry specific um ascorbic acids mm -hmm. what this means is there's a little bit less academic data because this comes from the suppliers and one of the more popular ones is actually 3 ethyl ascorbic acid we're gonna take a look at three new launches with this ingredient and i'm gonna ask victoria which one would you buy <laughs> <laughs> also uh i know 3 ethyl ascorbic acid sounds like ascorbic acid they're very different. Not the same thing. It is not the same thing. So do not uh, assume it's a one-to-one -one, uh, replacement. Yeah, definitely not. So <clears throat> to start, Sephora's own brand has an SAP with 3 ethyl ascorbic acid. They claim that this combination comes in at 7%. And mm. uh, and also comes with peptides. And the ingredient checks out. We'll put this up there. But basically, I read something like uh, water, propane diol, pen pentylene glycol, SAP, 3 ethyl uh, and then one to hexane diol. There is a scorbyl glucoside that follows that, but hmm. it's kind of chilling there. I wouldn't really <laughs> count, count this guy as or much a of a glucoside. Yeah, just chilling. So <laughs> da -da -da -da, it goes down the list. And what's interesting is uh, Sephora actually did clinical on this product. <gasps> Amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> whoever made this artwork though really hates Sephora or hates their job. We'll put the picture up there, but basically it says plus fifty nine percent glow. Plus 43% even skin tone. And then I was, oh. I was trying to look for the specs. I'm like, oh, is this like, what kind of testing is it for how many weeks? There is a little asterisk underneath that. And it is so small. I can't see it at all. <laughs> so if you really, really zoom in, really zoom in, you see um, scientific test on 21 volunteers after 28 days of application. That is tiny. Yeah. I, I think that's the width of the line pointing to the Bottle. Yeah, it is super oh duper tiny, God. and I don't know why it's so small, but it doesn't have to be that small. And it actually looks like either it's a typo or they did two tests because one has yeah. 21 <laughs> volunteers and one has 22 volunteers. <laughs> so, what I find interesting is with this percentage, it suggests to me that it's either with an expert evaluator or, mm. or instrumental data. So, that is a good thing. It's not just a self perception of this gives me more glow. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, I think it's a pretty strong start. Uh, and I will say, this does have the lowest percentage of the ones we're looking at today. And we should also clarify that the product itself claims 7% vitamin C. So remember when Gloria was talking about how like this broad sweeping statement about what that means? So yeah, um, we actually, for me, I feel like the percentage and the pairing of these two is fine. Yeah. I no issues there. And But it's just, you're not getting your traditional, this is not a traditional ascorbic acid serum. Right. That's it. Next. Cool. All right. First, A Beauty actually just launched um, an ascorbic acid or a vitamin C serum as well. It's called 10% Vitamin C Brightening Serum. Again, we it's just know. vitamin we C. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> so if you look at their ingredient list, it's water, 3 ethyl ascorbic acid, squalane, sodium uh, citrate, tocopher acetate, their signature colloidal oatmeal, da -da -da -da, mm -hmm. a lot of extracts. Da -da -da. So 3 ethyl. Back again. 
Yep, and the claims I kind of want to call out because um, they call out vitamin C visibly brightens and reduces look of mm. fine lines and wrinkles. Vitamin E softens skins and fights free radicals, mm. squalling, lots of moisture. Cool. Uh, I like the pause. <laughs> yeah, it's squalling. squalling. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, this is they call it vitamin C. Even mm. in the ingredient call, they didn't specify which one. Mm. They will say three ethyl with the data lights, like reduces the look of fine line wrinkles. May or may not be true. <laughs> yeah, and I think the other thing too is. I did kind of like the brightening serum, yeah. not, and this is where we're kind of like, you know, remember how the last episode we talked about how if you get into the details, it's vitamin C has, can get claimed as an antioxidant, yeah. boost your collagen, and also can brighten skin. And so I think it's like, I like that they had to define it's a brightening serum, mm-hmm. whereas a lot of them just like ride the, it's a vitamin C serum. Yep. Take from it what you will. Yep. And I'm so glad you said that because I want to highlight their before and after picture. First uh. of all, it's done after 10 days. And what are you supposed to see after 10 days? It's not a lot. And I will say, depending on the monitor you're using, depending on the browser you're lo- using, it can look like she looks a little darker after 10 days. And and why was this the chosen before and after yeah i don't we'll put the picture up but for podcast listeners just take it from us check it out on the sephora's oh. listing it honestly doesn't look better and the claim made here is a consumer <laughs> perception where it says 93 percent said this product did not irritate in italics their skin plus made it look brighter also in italics yeah it 93 percent said so consumer perception right but it really makes me feel like I'm reading like tea leaves or something. Yup. So uh, huh. yeah, it, they have a bunch of pictures, but that's the testing that I Before chose to go after. with. And so to us, even though if you're shopping for mm-hmm. it, you might see that, hey, Versace Beauty comes at 10%. This is higher than the Sephora version. Let's opt in for this one. We'll say, uh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. What's the next one, Gloria? <laughs> next one for me, I find on the claim side to mm-hmm. be a little irritating okay let's get into it this let's one it. is paula's right. choice okay they have a c5 super boost moisturizer mm-hmm. with five percent vitamin c and hexapeptide 5 okay i find this irritating because does the, the their super boost vitamin c line contains a serum that uses ascorbic acid mm-hmm. so to me if you're just they do have a lot with, of vitamin c products yeah the eye cream blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep. yeah so if you're shopping within this line you might think that's what you're getting is five percent ascorbic mm-hmm. acid but if you look at the ingredient list it goes water dicapital carbonate 3 ethyl ascorbic acid, dimethicone, glycol, yada, yada, yada. There is, again, ascorbic glucoside just hanging out in the corner. Hi. Yeah, yep, and there's Hello. thickeners. You see I love peptides. how squalane's in there again Squal- next to ascorbic glucoside. Yeah, first aid beauty and Paul Choice clearly talk to each other. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I would say I get that on the packaging, calling it vitamin C is easier and more relatable. Mm. Um, but within this line, calling it just generically vitamin C can be misleading. Totally. And I don't see any sort of clinical testing that comes with this. And I know, I think probably our marketing friends would be like, but to be able to just have the ingredient on it, a lot of people might not know what it is. Yep. So just label it as vitamin C. But like we said again, the mechanism is not a one-to-one translation for yep. all these derivatives. So what one molecule's benefits can bring can be completely different than the next guy. So. Yep. This is why you never want to assume that, oh, I have a vitamin C product in my skincare, in my routine. That should be good, right? For antioxidants. Mm. It depends. Yeah, yeah for so, sure. Yeah. So yeah, uh, those are the three relatively new-ish 3 ethyl products I've found. Mm. So out of this, these three, Victoria, which one would you buy? <laughs> well, God, I, if I didn't see that before and after. <laughs> Yeah, probably the Sephora one. <laughs> yeah, this is mildly surprising to me because yeah. um, I think I skewered Sephora CE you for really dupe a few years ago because yeah. that one had a vitamin C, the, the OG, or I don't know if that one's still on the market, mm. but that one basically used a vitamin C rich extract mm-hmm. and then wants to position it the same as C for Rulic. Yeah. But this one, not bad. It's, it has, it's a combination of SAP with 3 ethyl. SAP for me part one is a little bit more proven in the antioxidant arena yeah. as well as other use. It's at a should be theoretically effective percentage. Yeah. It has a clinical, even though the subtext was tiny. <laughs> but uh, all in all, out of the three, I would think if you can't use ascorbic acid, if you're on the market for derivative, yeah. that one's not a bad one at all. I also was thinking how if I were just like completely blind to this category, how confusing it would yeah. be trying to choose between these products. Yep. And I, you know, funny enough, of the three, 
I would get so confused about the Sephora one, even though that would be after reading the inky makes a lot of sense because it comes in the amber dropper. Yeah. And you think it's for AO, you know, you would think, oh, it's another vitamin C serum for exorbic acid. But mm. yeah, I just feel like this whole category, if I were just a normal skincare user, it would be so hard to shop for. I would not mm. know the difference. For real. And I will say the Polish Choice formula is not a bad formula. Mm. But it's just about kind of expectations yes, of what you're using 100%. this for. It also doesn't help that there's not a lot of data we can speak to for 3 ethyl ascorbic acid. Mm -hmm. So really trying to understand what it does for skin and how it performs is still a really big mystery for us. For sure. Yeah. And then I also have these three newer launches. Um, you can also find 3 ethyl at really high levels. Yeah. I think uh, the ordinary, not the ordinary, one of Nyad. Nyad, I think, has a really high ethylated one, uh, ascorbic acid. And then I think Ally of Skin has one that's like 20-30%. Mm. So I did do some digging to see if there's anything that I can find on using it at ultra high, like 20, 30%. And I did find a paper on it and I got really excited because the title was, so it was like, uh, I started reading it. I, I was looking for keywords like uh, 3 ethyl ascorbic acid with any percentage attached to it. And I read one step surface treatment reagent. I was like, oh, reagent, that's a strong word for, for, <laughs> for serums. 35% 3 ethyl ascorbic acid plus 50% citric acid restores the sheer bond strength of metal brackets bonded to bleached human enamel <laughs> in in vitro study. And I was like, oh, they're using it on braces. <laughs> yeah, so other than this paper, I couldn't find much else on the 15, 20, 25, 30% of the Darn, ethyl ascorbic so acid. Close. So, um, yeah. When you hear metal brackets and enamel, you're like, ah. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh, oh, oh. Not skincare, got it. All right, yeah. thank you, Google Scholar. But just a fun snippet for you. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. All right, so 3-O-Ethyl is definitely a very popular one right now. There's also THD Asorbate. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a new kit on the block that we should talk about because it's in a, a couple new uh, newer launches and yeah, yeah uh, lots of mystery around this one for sure. Yes. So this one, I will say, is nine as many products, but I would suspect it's coming you, yeah you'll probably see more of it and that's just how it goes it's, if something catches wind or you feel like oh vitamin c space mm -hmm. getting so crowded let's venture out into my own special derivative my own derivative <laughs> um so you might start seeing words like glycerol ascorbate in your products and one of the most well-known products that has this ingredient is tatcha's um is it called violet c it is called tatcha violet c brightening serum also brightening all right so um this one uses what they call a bisglycerol ascorbate and kind of like the name suggests it's ascorbic acid with two glycerin groups attached to it mm -hmm. And I started digging and I realized this is a proprietary <laughs> ingredient. This is on the supply, another industry trade, trade. ingredient and came from a Japanese company. And I found a paper on it. I was like, oh, oh Victoria, I found a paper on it. I found a paper on it. <laughs> and I opened it. It was all in Japanese. <laughs> so any Japanese friends out there would love to get your help. That's yeah. Great. The, the good thing is um, on this paper on bisglycerol ascorbate had the abstract itself is in English. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read a little piece of, in today's edition of their words, not mine. I'm going to read a little <laughs> piece from the abstract. It goes, in a human volunteer test, so this, was, this ingredient was tested in vivo on human, the application of VCDG, which is their shorthand for the bliss, bliss, glycerol bliss, ascorbate, bliss. <laughs> increased the skin surface water content. Therefore, we consider this ingredient to be an effective ingredient that improves skin hydration through enhancing CE formation. Well, that's a new one. <laughs> uh, uh, mm -mm. <clears throat> Are they saying it's a hydrator? That's what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh no. Oh no, not the hydrating claim. <laughs> so yes, glycerin is a great hydration molecule. So it's not surprising that when you attach glycerin groups to ascorbic acid, it increases water content, therefore probably acts as a humectant. What's a little mildly concerning is ain't nobody buying vitamin C products to hydrate their skin. <laughs> That's why I'm like, anything else? Is there anything else about this guy? So I will say this study does test in other avenues, right? Okay. There's a lot in vitro data on, I don't read Japanese, so I can go into yeah. detail, but there's a lot of in vitro data around yeah. it. But none of them very directly related to traditional vitamin C benefits like antioxidants and whatnot mm. and I highlighted that piece of claim because that is the one claim they made in vivo mm. so it makes me wonder it's like okay you're already testing on human volunteers why is it only essentially an instant hydration claim and that's the only thing we can say for sure is that it's hydrating so the one thing I want to highlight is they mentioned the expression of CE related compounds in skin 
Skin has its own antioxidant system. It's suggesting that it. Also, if you're wondering what CE, it's they've abbreviated it, but it's mm. called the cornified cell envelope. Um, mm-hmm. It's they're looking at a specific part and functionality mm-hmm. in the skin, just so that you don't think of it as like OCE for lip yeah, or anything weird yeah, sorry, like that. Yeah. But it's just paper abbreviation, and it can. Just fun fact: if you're uh, if you're writing one of these papers, you can abbreviate it however you want. So yes. So cool. yeah, I just think as a vitamin C product, if yeah. that's a main takeaway. It's hard for us to say, yeah, that's a vitamin C. That's probably <laughs> not what you're buying it for. It's got the absorb thing in the inky. Yeah. But that's it for now. So we, we should see if Tatcha maybe did a did they do a study? I don't think so. Any like, claims oh, there yes, to help so, us out? <laughs> yeah, so Tatcha has this ingredient at 20%. Mm. And based on their that's ing- a lot. Yes, it is okay. a lot. In the highlight ingredient part, they did claim that it has a unique 20% vitamin C blend. And they call this a fast-acting, moisturizing vitamin C, which is accurate. Uh, <laughs> absorbs quickly into skin, fighting aging from daily free radical assault. I don't know if that... Oh, no. But... Helps support surface cell turnover. Oh, it keeps going for firmer-looking skin while also improving moisture l- levels. Okay. Yeah. Remains in skin longer, helping to protect skin from oxidation and reduce UV damage for brighter skin over time. Oh, my God. It keeps going. Yeah. So, for me, it's the reduce UV damage part that my wall. I don't have a thing anything that supports that. So, that to me is a little awkward. And then they also have uh, this product also contains mild fruit AHAs at ten percent, gentle yet oh, effective Gloria's acids. Favorite. My favorite, <laughs> blah, 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 oh, no. rich extracts. <laughs> gentle yet effective acids remove debris and build up of dead skin cells for smooth, more radiant skin. And they did a clinical test. Uh, this is based on expert graded study of twenty women. Mm. In one week, they see smoother, more radiant skin. Yay. How many of them? I don't know. <laughs> In four weeks, they see visible improvement. It's just see. Yeah, on overall skin tone. How oh. many? How much improvement? I don't know. In eight weeks, they see an improvement in skin texture and the appearance of fine lines. I just want to call out that this is a terrible way of sharing results. Yeah, I... Like, really not good. So that's from the Sephora description part. Okay. And I do want to call out the one that the one stat that they chose to posterify okay. in the gallery is, <laughs> <laughs> is that after four weeks, 95% showed improvement in overall skin tone okay okay based on an expert grader study of 20 women so that's actually a clinical a true clinical not a consumer perception yeah so the majority of people saw some level of improvement in skin tone i will say though this to me doesn't isn't um isn't supporting evidence for this ascorbic acid uh, in particular because they also have the 10 percent vitamin c so it's hydrating mm. it kind of maybe mildly improves skin turnover mm. these can all factor in here and again this kind of, again goes back to maybe with this testing we can say at 20 percent such a high level use it does softly brighten skin well i don't know about this this aox free radical quenching business <laughs> yeah and i do want to call out that they actually still have a different form of vitamin mm-hmm. c in here their sorbyl tetra isopalmate mm-hmm. which actually has been around for a lot longer than this new guy which I'm, I'm wondering if it's also baked in, but um, maybe that's what they're writing in terms of those other claims. That's a very funky This is a funky product, product for sure. Yeah. And I think ultimately for me, though, it's what I, I know we're going to get into this later, but I always just seeing this product alone, if someone were to ask me about it, I'd want to know, like, what's the goal? What are your goals? Yeah, exactly. Then let's see if this is a good fit. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 All right. Next. Cool. All uh, right. We that's did... a juicy one. Yeah. All right. We but have there's more. We have juice part two. Yeah. Sing Jane, okay. which used to be the CBD brand and CBD train derailed. Anyway, who's that thing? <laughs> has a product called the C Drops. Right. Again, it's just generically called vitamin C, so I don't know. This one also has 20% vitamin C. Mm. And it has my favorite ingredient, cockatoo plum. <laughs> <laughs> But Gloria, it contains a hundred times more vitamin C than oranges. Yeah, it must be so potent, right? Don't make her do the rant. But anyways, <laughs> yes, but whatever. The ingredient list goes: propane, dial, water, glycerin, uh, three, three glycerol ascorbate, mm-hmm. ferulic Different acid, glycerol sorbate. Yep, cockatoo plum extract, arnica flower, yada yada yada. So it has one up on Tatcha specifically. One extra glycerin group on Montaja <laughs> instead, of, instead of two glycerins. <laughs> this is three glycerol ascorbate. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's fun. But also at 20%. And mm. so this one was also tested. And this is blind study conducted with 100 consumers under a doctor's supervision. 99% said skin looks brighter. Consumer 90, perception. 99% said skin feels more improved. They saw more radiance and they would recommend it to a friend. And 100% said skin looks more glowy. I like how glowy made it into the test. Yeah, so I will say kudos to them for doing 100 people. Mm. This is a very sizable test. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it is only consumer perception. 
So I I would give it a okay. It does something.、Mm-hmm. This product as a whole does something. With a hundred people hitting ninety eight, ninety nine, a hundred percent is not bad. Even though I would argue that glowy is a mildly weird operative word here. <laughs> also, what's with the ferulic acid? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's chilling. I love how it's like they must have the C E ferulic combo in there somehow for some reason. Yeah, and I will say this one it has really it has a lot of propane dial, has a lot of glycerin, so、mm. this is definitely a very powerful hydrator.、Mm. Um, as far as this this particular vitamin C goes, I want to share that I couldn't find anything very specific on three glycerin、mm. ascorbate. And you might ask, can I just say, hey, with two glycerin it does this? So with three glycerin. <laughs> It's a more hydrated、mm. question mark question mark question mark. So th-、uh, I think the takeaway here is, without getting into too much details,、mm. you can't translate any derivative data across the board, right?、Yes. I can't say I replaced the magnesium grouping MAP with sodium, therefore the data carries. From me, part one, you'll know that that's not how that works. Yeah. So when you have two glycerol groups versus three, you can't extrapolate anything. Like how does skin interact with this molecule instead? You don't really know. Does the antioxidant portion translate over? Does the hydration? Does the pigmentation part translate over? None of that applies, and I couldn't find any testing specifically on this ingredient. I'm also starting to become like a grumpy, like human being with all of these before and afters because、mm-hmm. they're clearly using just general consumer perception, like take a photo on my mobile、mm-hmm. as the before and after.、Mm-hmm. And I think a long time ago, I was telling Gloria about how like before and afters are just almost like replacing testing,、mm-hmm. and how they're just using that regardless of the like the, how structured and I guess uniform these pictures are. And I don't know. I just feel like now, just as we go through these decodes more and more, a lot of times you'll hear is like, "This is not a professional before and after," but it's used and it can be very convincing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And honestly, we'll put the before and after up. Can make a judgment yourself. I think I wanted to talk about. I, I honestly couldn't find even a third product that has a glucose scorbate,、yeah. but I am a firm believer that it's gonna come. Yeah. Um. So just letting、People、you guys like new. Yeah. New shiny things to talk about. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So、uh, <clears throat> the takeaway here is this is the new new. There is not a lot of data. <laughs> There's only、um, I can only find some bits and pieces from、yeah. the creator and the supplier of、yeah. these ingredients. So I would say if you see a new age、uh, ascorba something like this one, it's definitely I would definitely pick the one whose data you believe it more, and it should definitely come with its own testing. Yeah. So I think you know to sum up a lot of meat,、mm-hmm. some feeling a little random. We have a few takeaways.、Mm-hmm. The first thing being decoding vitamin C molecules here is really、Do、helpful.、It. These are all just called C somethings. Yeah, <laughs> and it can be the difference between what you're trying to accomplish and your skin routine goals. Are you getting the antioxidant benefit? Do you want brightening benefits? Are you trying to? I don't know. You want that collagen production benefit we talk about? Those. Not everyone performs the same way.、Right. Some don't quite seem to perform at all, which is、right. concerning. So. Yeah, that would be our first one. So that's number one, and number two is: Have you considered trying ascorbic acid? <laughs>、uh, check out our episode from two weeks ago if you're wondering in the sea of dupes which one you I want to try for. If that works for you, you can tolerate the mildly hot doggy dog smell. Yeah, <laughs> and it's still the OG for a good reason. Yeah. Otherwise,、uh, we will be sharing an upcoming blog post. We're probably gonna figure out some sort of segmentation to try to think about. You know how to create a better picture of how all these vitamin C molecules work or don't work, and then ultimately, if you see yeah, the next product you want to buy and it just says vitamin C, give it a look and let us know if you have any questions. Yeah, and hopefully this was helpful. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful.、Yeah. Um, we will we will be back next week talking about what I don't know because doing this episode took a lot out of us. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise. Where can they find us, Gloria? You can find us on our website at chemistconfessions dot com. That recently got a facelift. <laughs> you can DM us on Instagram at chemist dot confessions, or you can email us at info at chemistconfessions dot com. Otherwise, thank you guys for listening. We will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.